desk, diamond, paper is probably an essential part of it. And that's what this video is about. How to make convincing paper. And since making only one sheet is going to be pretty uninteresting, we're going to make a full pile of paper that you can put on the tables in your next office window. Now in this tutorial we are going to use several different paper textures. Therefore I have put together a little package for you. Just click on the download link in the description if you would like to follow along. And with that out of the way, let's head into Blender. Okay, now that we are in Blender, we're going to start like pretty much all other tutorials by deleting everything. So press A once or twice until everything is selected and then just press X to get rid of everything like that. So now that we have a blank canvas to work with, we are going to start by adding in our, our you could say our first sheet of paper, which is obviously just a plane. There we go. Now we need to, to set the scale for this because at least I want it to be um, an A4 paper and an A4 paper is usually not squarish. So bring up the properties and set the dimensions. But if you look here, underneath dimensions, it just says two. We don't have um, a metric scale, which is what Blender defaults to. So by default, we have no um, concrete unit of measurement, but that's not what we want for this scene. That's going to get a little bit complicated later on. Therefore, just go over to your scene settings and underneath units, just set it from none to metric. Many people already have that by default, but if you don't have this set to metric, you should do that now. And you can see the 2.0 has just become two meters, which is great because now we can just go in, in here and type in the actual dimensions of an A4 paper, which is 21 centimeters on the X axis and 29 centimeters on the Y axis. So, and while we, while we are here, we should also apply the scale because you can see that got really distorted because of that. So press control A, bring up this window and select apply scale. Okay. And while we are still in the properties, um, we should adjust some more settings because if you look around, first of all, um, if we try to get close to our object, the clipping starts to get really annoying. So change the clipping scale from 10 centimeters to something low, like one millimeter and 10 meters. So now we can get really close without any distortions. Um, then you're going to see that the grid is way too large. So go and go to display grid floor and set the scale down to something like um, 0.01, which is what I like to use. And what I personally like to do is set the line count to 100 because now this is exactly one meter and this is exactly one meter. So this gives us um, a really good reference point for what we are modeling here. And one last step in the properties um, underneath shading, um, activate ambient occlusion and set the strength to two and the distance to 0.01. You're not going to see an immediate effect of this, um, but that's going to be useful later on. Okay. Now that we have, we have basically um, finished our setup, um, we can close the properties and we can close the toolbar. So we have a little bit more space and then we can start modeling. So press tab to go into edit mode and begin by extruding up your plane. And now this is basically the first big decision you'll have to make. Um, how thick or how high do I want my stack to be? So if you look, look online for the average thickness of a single uh, sheet of paper, you'll find something around 0.06 to 0 0.08, 0 0.09 millimeters. Now I want my um, stack to be around 150 sheets high. If you do the math, that um, gives you 10.5 millimeters. Um, so I'm just going to type that in as, um, as the meter measurement. So I, I'm going to type in 0 0.0105. You can see it down there. Um, and it already says that's one centimeter and 0.5 millimeters which is exactly what we want. So confirm that by pressing enter. Okay, um, but at the moment, this is just one big block and not really a stack of paper. So we're going to 
add some loop cuts. First of all, around this side. So press Ctrl R, make sure that um, your pink line goes around the model like this. And then just again type in um, the amount of sheets that you want to simulate here. So in my case, 150. And you can see we get these really tiny, um, these really tiny lines here that sort of represent the sheets. Now, um, later on, it's also um, going to be very useful if we have some more subdivisions or some more loop cuts around our model. So I'm just going to add them now. Um, so again, press Ctrl R and add them around this side and this side. Um, as a rule of thumb, I like to use um, one loop cut for every two centimeters. Now this is 29 centimeters. So just, we'll just say 15 loop cuts. We'll do it on this side. This is 21 centimeters, so we're just, just going to say, yeah, 11 loop cuts. Now, if you've done that right, this should look roughly like a square. This is close enough, so we'll run with it. And for now, we can actually go out of edit mode. We're going to come back later to make some adjustments. But for now, make this toolbar a little bit bigger, the properties, um, and move to the modifier section. All right, in here we are going to add a total of four modifiers, beginning with a displacement modifier. So I'm going to call this one displace x. Um, and as you can guess from the name, I'm going to set the direction to x. If you look at the moment, this strength value just pushes around our little stack left and right. So um, set that to something really low, like um, 0.003. That's what I used in the final result, I believe. So something like that. And then add in a texture, which I'm going to call um, displacement horizontal. Yeah, like that. Okay. And now click on this little um, button here, show texture and texture tab to actually edit the texture. It takes us over here. You can see at the moment it's just set to image or movie with no input image. So that's kind of useless. It's just black. So we're going to change that to clouds. And you can already see it did something in the viewport, but you can't really say what. Now turn down the size and you're going to see the effect. So I've just set it to zero of 0 0.00001 that's the smallest blend I can do for that texture so and if we move up close which again we can do because we have changed our clipping value um, you're going to see that it somewhat looks like paper but it's a bit too distorted it's a bit too noisy and a bit too stretched um, so I'm going to increase the size again to um, 0 0.01 now this looks way too soft but now if we increase the depth from two to something like 10, you'll see that we get a really nice effect. It looks really good. Um, we have some lines here, um, but we also get like an overall shape, um, which you would get from an, a real pile of papers. So, but at the moment, this is only be applied to two sides, this one and this one, because we are only working on the X direction. So therefore just copy this modifier displacement X, name the new one displace Y and set the direction to Y. Now you can see we get this effect around all four sides, but not on the Z axis because we don't want that on the Z axis. All right. And what you can also do since we have this as two modifiers, um, you can control the strength individually. So if I want this to be a little bit stronger, I can just do that now, maybe set that to 0.005 and this one to 0.003 or something. You can play around with these values and um, find something that you personally like. Which brings us to our third modifier. I'm just going to minimize these two and add a third displacement modifier. You can probably guess what it's going to be called, displacement Z, and again set the direction to Z. Now this one's going to get its own texture. So create a new one and call this one 
displacement vertical just like that again this looks really messy at the moment so turn down the strength almost to zero again like something like 0.004 maybe yeah that, that, that works about right so go over th to the texture tab again with this little button show texture and texture tab um, and what I like to do for this texture the displacement vertical just increase the size a little bit because then it's not not so noisy so maybe like 0.0025 let's take two to five yeah that that looks about right but there's a problem with this texture so if we um, if we now press run to go into front view and press five to go into um, orthographic view mode you can see that um, that our pile of paper is basically clipping through the floor like if we look this red line represents um, the uh, x-axis and this is all positive z this is negative z and you can sort of see that it's it's not really laying on top of there it's it's more like all over the place and it's not really adhe adhering to the floor like a real piece um, like a real pile of paper would so what can we do about this well we're going to use um, some weight painting some vertex groups um, to make sure that this doesn't happen so press Control tab to go into vertex painting and press T to bring up the toolbar all right now just um, set the strength to something low like um, 0.25 and then just start painting on one edge here on the top and once you've done a little bit of painting just go over to your data tab in the properties and you'll see it automatically added a group call that something like um, displacement Z impact again you can you can choose any name you want it doesn't really matter um, then go back to your modifiers go to your displacement Z modifier and underneath the vertex groups add in the vertex group you just created and you can see now we can basically paint on this displacement effect to the edges while the rest of the of our stack stays completely flat which is exactly what we want so now just go around that make sure it's not too uniform this actually makes it look better if we like have some places which are a bit more deformed and some which are a little bit less deformed just go around there and, and play around with it Now I'm going to add in one pla one other place where it's a bit stronger, yeah, around here. And now I'm all the way around. Yeah, this is this is good. This is roughly what it should look like. So now press Control Tab again to go out of weight painting mode. And if we go into front view now by pressing one and then five for orthographic mode, you can see that we get a nice displacement on top, but on the bottom. Our, our stack is completely flat and it lays perfectly on our ground which is great now one modifier left add another one this time it's not a displacement modifier this time it's just a bevel modifier and now move up really close you can see we have some um, a bevel effect going on which is um, really good but it also kills a bit of this um, this sharpness that, that we have um, created with our displacement modifier so what you want to do here is just go to your limit method and set that from none which means um, the bevel effect is applied to literally every edge on this model you can see we have around 35,000 vertices here versus if we just quickly disable that versus around 8,000 so we're creating a lot of new geometry here just set that to ang angle you can leave it at 30 degrees that usually works fine and you can see we only generated around a thousand new um, new vertices it's only around this edge which is perfect that's exactly what we want we have a little bit of smoothness on this edge and a really sharp really sharp um, edges on these large large sides here okay now we are done with the modifiers and in theory that's it but if you look closely to these sides you'll see that there's something's off we, we get like this weird shading 
Yeah, you can see that. Um, and we have these lines, these weird glitchy lines, and and they are really annoying. So to fix that, we could just shade the entire model smooth. If we do that, they're basically gone or almost invisible. But again, this sort of kills this this sharp look that we want. You can see now it, it looks all soft and, and not really good. So leave it at smooth shading, but go into edit mode and and go to vertex select just click on one of the um, vertices here or one of the verte one vertex here then use um, the period on your number pad to zoom in really closely again we have really low clipping values so we can do that then go to into edge selection mode and just click on one of these tiny edges here press shift key and select similar length so this menu allows you to um, select all sorts of similar edges. In this case, we are just going to use length. So it's going to select all those and all those other really small um, edges around the model. There you go. And now what you want to do is invert the selection by pressing Ctrl I, yeah, like that. So everything is selected except these little edges here. Then open up the toolbar if it's not open already and move over to shading and UVs. Okay, now in here, what you want to do is you want to set all those edges, all those edges except those there to sharp. And what you want to do is set all faces to flat, like that. Now you can see the edge effect is pretty much gone. Yeah, like that. You can, it looks like just a few lines. We don't have these um, vertical lines anymore, but we still keep this, this really nice and really sharp look, um, for example, on, on the edges here. So that's pretty much it for the modeling. We can now move on to the materials. All right, time for some materials. So before we can start with um, with the node editor, we need to make some additional adjustments. First of all, if we go into rendered view mode at the moment, you'll see um, that there's not a lot to see because it's all just gray. So go to the world settings and let me just quickly enable my screencast keys again. So go to your world settings and click on the use nodes button and for the color input add in an environment texture. Now in the texture package you should find an HDR image hotel room 4k. Use this one. It's from HDRI heaven. They provide all of their HDRI images for free so that's really great for us. And as the strength value, choose something around 1.4, 1.5. Um, you can play around with that. I just think that um, 1.4 or 1.5 work really well. So now if we go into rendered view mode, you can see that it all nicely, it's all nicely lit and we can actually see something of what, about what we are doing. So the next step would be to add in the materials. So go to the material section and click on new. The first material is going to be called paper side and the second one is going to be called paper top. So the top material is going to be used for both the top and bottom. I, I've just called it top because that's shorter. So and I'm also going to go to the paper top and in the viewport settings I'm going to ma make that a little bit darker. You don't need to do that necessarily but um, I find it quite helpful later on when applying these because then we can actually see whether we have applied them correctly. So now go into edit mode and maybe your top and bottom are still selected but in this case um, we also have these edges around the side which so I'm just going to press A to deselect everything and then I'm going to press 7 and 5 on the number pad so we are in top view 
then I'm going to press Z, so we are in wireframe mode. And finally, I'm going to switch to face select mode down here. And now we can see that we have these faces. We're looking at the top of the stack and we can just use the box select tool, which we can access by pressing B and just select everything on top. Make sure you don't select one of the edges. And now if we go out of orthographic mode and out of wireframe mode, we can see that we have selected the top and the bottom and now we can just assign the material if we go out of edit mode, you'll see that top and bottom look a little bit darker while the side stays completely white. That means we've done it right. And that's why I changed the viewport color. So now we can easily verify that. Okay, still one step le left before we can head into the node editor. We need to unwrap this. I'm going to, to do this, um, this in two steps. So go um, into the um, edit mode again. So at the moment, we still have um, this selected up top um, and that's really handy. So go again into top view and just press U, um, project from view. And that's just going to unwrap um, the top and the bottom part um, perfectly in an A4 format. So that's the easy part. Now press Ctrl I to invert your selection. So now we have selected the edge um, and that's going to be a bit more difficult because um, actually you don't need to invert the selection anyways because we need to make another, take another step um, because we need to select one tiny edge here. So just click on any edge, use the, um, the, the little um, period point on your number pad to zoom in and then get really close to one of the edges like this and yeah, a bit closer and use the alt key and left click um, to select one of those vertical edges like that. Here you can see it and then open up your toolbar. If you haven't done that already, go to shading and UVs and then click on mark seam. Okay, so now we've marked this as a seam for UV unwrapping and now we can um, unwrap the edge. Now, since the edge is fairly annoying to select, I'm just going to go back into face selection mode, back to the top and again back to wireframe mode. Then I'm going to select the entire top and bottom part again, like this. It's the same procedure we just did. And this time I'm going to invert it. Now is actually the time we should do that. And you can see we've selected all four sides can just and can just press U unwrap and that's that. So time to go out of edit mode because now it's finally time to open our node editor. So just split the view like that and open up the node editor in the bottom window. Now go to paper side. We're going to start with paper side. Um, in the top view, just switch to material mode, material shading there. And then just get rid of the default diffuse shader because we are not going to use that. We are going to use a principal shader. So go to shader, principled, and just connect that to the surface output. There we go. Okay, now we are going to use um, an image texture from the pack which I've prepared. Um, this, this one's called paper side. It's literally just um, the side of a book scanned in. So you can see all those fine lines from the pages. And if we just connect that, you can see that something happened, but it, it, it looks off. You can see we have these weird black lines, these orange lines. and it's not really working and that's because um, the UV unwrapping has actually um, flipped our our, um, our sides in the wrong way or it, it has mapped them poorly which can happen. So go over to your UV and image editor, open up your paper site.png 
and there you can see these individual pages like that's what it's supposed to look like um, and then just um, press tab to go into edit mode these sides should still be selected now in my case all I need to do is um, rotate them by 90 degrees and scale them up like that so just to check yep that's the effect I'm looking for you can see we have um, a lot of fine black and sometimes orange lines um, going across the surface here and that's perfect that's um, that's the effect I'm looking for so if it looks like that you know you've done it right and you can now head back to your node editor it uses this UV unwrapping by default so that's no problem okay great now all we need to do um, for this scene or for this material um, is a bump map and since this is almost black and white and it's already somewhat somewhat similar to what a bump map look, would look like we're just going to cheat here we're going to duplicate that turn that into a non-color data image or change the color space to non-color data and then just add in a bump map node so shift a vector bump just plug that into the normal input of your principal shader and get the uh, color output of your non-color data image that and you'll see that we get something but it's a little bit too strong so um, reduce the strength of your bump map to I think I use like 0.33 or 0.4 I'm going to go with 0.4 here now if we head into rendered view mode by pressing shift Z, shift Z you can see yeah we get these really nice really fine lines across the surface and yeah it's starting to look like a real real paper so here you, you can see it really well on this side we get these really fine lines and it, it looks it really looks like a paper stack so go out of um, out of render view mode back to material mode because we have still one material left to do which is the paper top right there again we don't need the default diffuse shader we are going to use a principled shader so add shader principled plug that in and for this top part um, I'm going to use just a PNG image of a letter it's just like a letter template it doesn't really say anything meaningful so just plug that in now you can see since we unwrapped it the unwrapping um, has sort of distorted that it's not showing up properly you can see the text is all cut off and it's way too big so again go back to the UV image editor open up your letter.png there you can see you should see this yellow square logo at the top just go to edit mode at the moment we have selected these four edges so we can easily switch back to the top and bottom part by pressing ctrl i and you can see yep the unwrapping is not working properly so just scale that up until it fits your image so I need to scale that on the x-axis and I'm just going to move that down a little bit by pressing G and then holding shift so not shift G but G shift because then you can do like really fine movements with it now if we zoom out we can see yep all the things are neatly visible all right perfect time to go back to the note editor where we have one step left to do again go to your texture folder in there you should find a texture called paper one normal that's basically just a normal map of um, a blank a blank sheet of paper which I scanned in and then I raised the contrast really strong and now you, you get a really nice normal map from that so just drop that in change it to non-color data because we are not going to use the color output as a color so you need to do that and 
press shift A, go to vector and add a normal map node. If you've ever worked with normal maps before, then you probably know this process. I've done it a thousand times. And just zoom in really closely and you can see we get this like this really fine pattern um, which just add, adds a little bit of realism with realism <laughs> sorry um, you can play around with the strength of this normal map um, I think I like to go for something like two if you have like really rough paper you can change it to something like five then it looks it looks really really strong but I don't like that I like to um, I prefer paper that's a little bit more soft so change it to something like two that should do the trick and yeah at this point um you can play around with the roughness i think for the um for the final render i was used a roughness of point z um point seven five um but basically we are done here with our pepper stack um all that's left to do are like um small details that we can add we can add to our scene for example um that the final the top piece of paper is um, slightly offset so it's um, it's slightly tilted you'll see what I mean in a second it's slightly rotated so just go into edit mode select one of the faces on top press shift G and select similar normal that means we select the top part but not the bottom and then just use um, shift D for duplicate move that up the tiniest little bit on the z-axis and then rotate it on the z-axis like that and you can see we get this really cool effect where it's somewhat offset on top now what you can also do is just grab this again it should still be selected in edit mode again press shift D duplicate that and move it down on the z-axis and then just rotate it like that and maybe grab it a little bit so press um, grab G for grab and then shift Z and you can move it on all axis except except the Z axis so again just move that in there a little bit so it's um it, it's like peeking out yep just play around with it you can add as many of these special offset sheets um, as you like I'm going to stop here because basically we are done so if we go into rendered view mode it might take a while you can see that we have a pretty decent paper material it looks pretty convincing convincing yeah and that's basically it for this tutorial except maybe one thing um if you look at the original render i added a, a few tiny little post-it notes um which are really easy to make i'm just going to show you that um so just add in another plane move that upwards a little bit on the z-axis um, then go into edit mode use the loop cut tool ctrl R to make 15 to 20 loop cuts I'm going to stick with 15 then enter proportional editing down here and set the fall off type to sharp just like that so then click on one of the edges and just press G then Z and move that down use your mouse wheel to make the um, the little the white circle a little bit smaller so something like that maybe you can you can also go into edit mode and rotate that a little bit you know give it a bit of randomness and then we're going to add a really simple material so add a new material and call it post post it for post-it note and this is just going to be a combination of a diffuse shader and a transmission shader where is it I'm sorry it's called translucent um so just mix those with a mix shader node like that and add in an RGB node here from input RGB so you can manipulate both colors at the same time now some of you might ask why am I using a translucent shader that's basically um, because I'm rendering this on an AMD graphics card and AMD and subsurface scattering 
don't really go together really well. So if you are rendering, rendering this on your CPU, um, you can also use subsurface scattering here that might give you a slightly different effect. But honestly, I don't really see a difference for this. So I'm just going to stick with translucent, with a translucent shader. So go into rendered view mode and make it, for example, a little bit green. Now, if, if this trans, um, translucent effect appears to be too strong for you, you can change that using the, um, the mix shader. So you can either make it really, really translucent or really not that translucent. Um, personally, I'm fine with the value of 0.5. This is just a little extra detail, so I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to, back in, to go back into material mode and I'm going to place that around the edge of this paper. So move it downwards and move it on the X and Y axis. Yeah, maybe up a little bit so it doesn't clip into this paper. And there you go. That's basically it. We can now take a look at this. Yeah, that's a really convincing um, stack of papers. Now I'm going to make this a little bit darker because I think it's a bit too bright. So I'm going to reduce the um, emission strength for the world. But again, you can from now on you can play around with this. You can change all sort of sorts of settings um, and just make it whatever you like it to be. Yeah. So I guess thanks for following along. I hope it all worked out well, and I'll see you in the next video.